first and foremost, just offering all honest praise. Yeah. No, it's not that. It's not it. That was it. First and foremost, offering all honest praise, respect, acknowledgement, and thanks to the great king of the universe. To the God of our fathers, to the God of Abraham, the God of Yitzchak, and the God of Yaakov. Thanking him for all things and everything. I bid you in the tongue of my forefathers. Shabbat shalom Lako. Please be seated. <clears throat> Thanking the Most High God for life. Thanking him for strength. Thanking him for food, clothing, and shelter. Thanking the Most High God because he is good and his mercy endures forever. Thanking him for my life. Thanking them for the lives of my family. Thanking them for your lives and the lives of your families. We're going to continue to go through the book of Psalms. And today we're going to be doing Psalms 19 and 20. Praying everyone is feeling well. Uh-huh. Thanking the Most High God, because he is king. Before I get into the portion, I just want to touch on a couple of pieces of, of current events. I typically touch on current events because I believe that when we understand exactly when we know the different things that are going on in the world, it makes us, it allows us to be able to make more informed decisions about the place where we are, the people who we encounter, and the people who we are dwelling amongst. I believe in that the, the scripture that it says, my people are, are consumed for lack of knowledge. And I think the more that we actually look at these situations and the, the, the different news and the different things that's happening, the more that we look at it objectively, I think it allows us to better to understand uh, the things that we need to do as a people in order to get ourselves together. First story that I'm going to touch on is, I mean, nothing really is more, just more of a, a conversation. So I, I saw across the news feed that uh, Derek Chauvin, that's the officer who, who uh, stood on the neck uh, or kneeled on the neck of George Floyd. Mm -hmm. I heard that he was stabbed in federal prison. Um, so, yeah, how unfortunate. How unfortunate. <laughs> um, right, how, you know, how, how unfortunate. Did he uh, die? They said, I'm sorry? Did he die? Fortunately, he survived. Oh. No, 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 no. Fortunately, he survived. And I'm, and I was about to say something, but I forgot we we, on we stream it. So I'm a, I'm gonna just leave it there. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't want at no point do I want to give the impression that we are a hardened uh, people who lack compassion. I do, however, want everyone to know that. If you continue to beat and continue to beat and continue to oppress somebody, feelings are going to come out. And when certain things happen, you're not going to be sympathetic or empathetic because you're just not. You know, that was the, there was that movie Braveheart. Mm. Anybody saw the movie Braveheart? Um, everybody talked about how, how great a movie it was. Hmm. So I watched it. Or... What is it? About three hours and 40 minutes or something like that. And so they, you know, what they told me was they said, you got to get to the part where, you know, and you'll know the part when you see it. And I'm like, all right. So I watched it and it was, they had him in the torture rack. And as they were, they were trying to get him to speak, uh, they were trying to get him to acquiesce and he wouldn't. And at the last, at their last attempt, he yelled out freedom. And I was figuring, okay, this must be the part that I was waiting for. Very anticlimactic because as I looked at it, I just couldn't relate. Just couldn't relate. 
they say that right now, not they say, but right now, 41 states have, are suing the social, suing the social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, and they're suing them because they're saying that the, the platform itself has been geared towards negatively affecting youth, yeah. specifically our youth. And what they're saying is that what it's doing is it's contributing to the degrading uh, mental health of our youth, and really youth in general, but specifically ours, also deepening depression and anxiety. And so the reason that I talk about that is because I believe that it's important not only for our youth, but even us as adults, when you spend, mm -hmm. when we spend hours. all of this time, hours and hours on social media, mm -hmm. what happens is we have our own problems. And then you get into the social media aspect of it and then people talk about their problems on social media and we get dragged in because it's salacious mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's nice and it's juicy and all those different things, all the while you getting dragged in and you're, you're pulling in other people's negative energy mm -hmm. into your own personal space. So I just wanted to put that out there. The last thing that I want to touch on before we go into the portion is, so all week, or at the beginning of the week, they have been talking about this, this ceasefire that's going to be between Israel and Hamas. And I noticed... The way they framed it was very interesting. Not, not the way they framed it. I guess it's just what it is. So what they said, they were exchanging 50 hostages that Hamas took for 150 prisoners. And I want you to understand the use of that term, prisoners. Because when they explained who those prisoners were, the prisoners are women and children that are currently being held in Israeli jails. <laughs> and that's who they described as prisoners versus hostages. And I just wanted to, um, I just found it interesting that, and it's certain things that they do that they put right in our face. Right. And unfortunately, if we aren't woke to it, if we aren't hip to it, if we aren't paying attention to it, then we'll just kind of let that go right on by. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, everyone else, the world is in an uproar. Young people are in an uproar. There are, there are, there is a group of rabbis a group of rabbis that are suing President Biden because he did not do enough to protect the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. Rabbis. When I tell you God is real, God is real. Because in everything that's happening and all of the propaganda and all of the different things that they're talking about and putting out there, God is still real. And God is still just. And God is still empathetic. And God is going to continue to put the information out there for his people to be better. We as his people need to grab the information and take it to be better. And so this psalm, when you, when you go into this psalm, and this psalm 19 is, is the essence of how we should look at God. When you look at this Psalm 19, for everybody who's put together a resume, you see at the beginning of the resume, you talk about what you are willing to offer, what you can offer. And then throughout the resume, you provide your support and documentation about what you offer, your experiences, the things that you can bring to the table. This is God's resume for his work and Torah. Come on. Psalms 19, hallelujah. hallelujah. For the leader, a psalm of Dawid. The heavens declare the glory of Yah, 
and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Amen. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night revealeth knowledge. Mm -hmm. There is no speech, there are no words, neither is their voice heard. Come on. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. And then hath he set a tent for the sun, which is a bride. Hold, hold, hold right mm -hmm. there, because I want to stop. Because I want to talk about this for a minute, right? Because what it says, it starts off by saying, the heavens declare the glory of Yehoah, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Uh -huh. Right? And then it says, so when you declare something, you do what? You say something. Right. When you declare something, you do what? You talk about it. You bring about it. You remind people of it. That's what happens when you say stuff, when you declare it. Am I right or wrong? That's right. I just want you all to stay with me for a minute, because this is God. And then it goes on and it says, it says day to day. Utter speech. Who? Just day. Day to day utter speech. And night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech mm -hmm. nor words, neither their voice heard. So who's uttering? Hmm. What's being uttered? If, 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 they, if, you talk, if they say that they're talking about it and it's declaring and all of those different things, yet not a word is being spoken. Praise. Because when you go outside, right, when you go outside and you look at the things that God does, that's the glory all by itself. Sometimes you don't need the words. Sometimes you don't need the extra uh, commentary. Because what you see speaks for itself. That's right. If it's self-explanatory, am I right or wrong? Mm -hmm. Can you do me a favor? Can you go to Exodus for a minute? Go, uh, read, go to Exodus 14. And read Exodus 14, 10 through 14. Your whole will fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. No, no, no. Start at verse 10. Mm -hmm. That's verse 10? No, it was 14. Oh, no. Nah. Read oh. from verse 10 to verse 14. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them. And so we all know this. This is, this is um, our redemption from Egypt, right? Come on. And they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto Jehovah. Mm -hmm. And they said unto Moshe, Because there were no graves in Egypt, mm -hmm. hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Right. Wherefore hast thou dealt thus, with, dealt thus with us to bring us forth out of Egypt? Come on. Is not this the word that we spoke unto thee in Egypt, saying, mm -hmm. Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it were better for us to serve the Egyptians... Come then on. that we should die in the wilderness. Come on. And Moshe said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of Jehovah, which he will work for you today. For whereas ye have seen the Egyptians today, ye Come shall on. see them again no more forever. Jehovah will fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Because what happens in adversity is, is the voice of people panic. In adversity, people get nervous. Mm -hmm. In adversity, people get upset. In adversity, people don't know what to do. So oftentimes, they speak, oftentimes speak out of turn. But sometimes, in order to understand and acknowledge what God is about to bring, you just need to be silent. That's right. And let God show you. Because sometimes, God can show you better than he can tell you. That's right. Sometimes he can show you better than he can tell you. So oftentimes, in these days and times, I know y'all have, uh, uh, it's a thousand of us talking, probably at this same moment right now. You have people who speak. You have adversity that comes about, and people want to talk about it, and they want to explain this, and they want to explain that. And some of the explanations are good, and some of the explanations are not so good. But guess what? Sometimes when God is working, you just need to be silent and let the mm -hmm. work represent itself right because god doesn't need a spokesperson all we need to do is we need to allow ourselves to be open to understand exactly what god is showing come on let's go back into psalms verse six which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices to have a strong man to run his course his going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. Come on. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Come on. The law of Yahweh is perfect, restoring the soul. Whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on. Let's just stop right there. 
Because I'm going to tell you, it says the law of Yahweh is perfect, restoring the soul. Mm -hmm. You don't need all of the rest of the books. That's right. You don't need all the extra, all of the extra commentary. You don't need any of that right. because the law of Yahweh is it's perfect. perfect. Mm -hmm. I, read the autobi I read the autobiography of Malcolm X, and it gave me information. Right? All of those Toni Morrison novels will not move you as much as Torah will move you. Right. It says that the law of Yehoah is perfect, restoring, restoring the, soul. the soul. So when you want to get back to God, where you got to get back to? That's right, the law. All the other stuff is good. You want to know something. You want to see something. Some things motivate. Some things inspire. But when it comes to restoration, right. you need to get back to God. When it comes to restoration, you need to get back to Torah. That's right. Because that's going to be the thing that's going to keep us in line. That's going to be the thing that's going to keep us comfortable. That's going to be the thing that's going to keep us safe. Restoring the soul. Come on. The testimony of Yehovah is sure, making wise the simple. Come on. The precepts of Yehovah are right. Rejoice in the heart. Come on. The commandment of Yehovah is pure, enlightened in the eye. I just need you to read that again. The precepts of Yehovah are right. Rejoice in the heart. The commandment of Yehovah is pure, enlightened in the eyes. The commandment of Yehovah is pure, enlightened in the eyes. And you know the good part about the commandment of Yehovah being pure is when somebody comes and speaks something improper or right, impure, impure, you recognize it right away right. because it's not pure. That's right. When you get a glass of water, right, and somebody give you a nice glass of water, and sometimes it might have like a little bubble, it might have a little bubble here, it might have a little bubble there, but you can see right through it. It's water. It's water. It's refreshing. Versus for, for those of y'all, for those of us who mm -hmm. used to live in the projects and you used to turn on that tap water, <laughs> that water was cloudy for a little while before it cleared up, am I right or wrong? That's right. You knew that wasn't really water. We know pureness when we see it. That's right. We know pureness when we hear it. Yeah. So when someone is speaking perverseness, when something is perverse, when someone is acting in a perverse way, we know it right away. That's right. But the unfortunate part is sometimes some of us aren't really sure. Because we, we see perversity. But we're looking at, we're too busy looking at the person mm. rather than looking at the action. And so what happens is, is when you're looking at a person who you have admiration for versus looking at an action, you can become what? Confused and conflicted because the person can be the nicest person you ever want to meet, but the actions are going to tell you whether it's perverse or not. Teach us. When I tell you at work, I work with some of the nicest sweetest, most compassionate people that are out there. I'm telling you, they nice. They made me feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. We know people that are nice, sweet. But when you measure them up to God, how do they fall? Mm. Because it's always the action. And that's why when, when God talks about judgment and they're going to go into judgment, they're going to go into judgment in a little while. That's why you don't judge people. You judge the action. Right. Because the action is going to tell a story. When a person comes in and they start talking about, yeah, I'm this person and I did this and all of those different things. And, you, and sometimes they have this thing called character witness and all of, yeah, that's all nice. But tell me what happened. Because that's the only thing that matters. David was the nicest person out there. Am I right or wrong? Mm-hmm. David, look, David wrote this. Mm -hmm. David was one of the nicest people out there. And when it came before God and Natan came to him, uh -huh. it wasn't, oh, David, oh, David. It was the action. That's it. The way that you judge a person is through their actions. Correct. The way that you judge right or wrong is through their actions. Teach us. And that part is important because when you start talking about coming together, when you start talking about establishing certain things, you have to establish it based on actions, not just people. 
Because the fact of the matter is sometimes people, as much as we hate to say it, inhibit progress. And oftentimes we don't really know it or maybe we don't want to say it or maybe we don't want to talk about it. But God comes first. That's right. And when we put God first, sometimes God first, putting God first may mean saying to your wife or your husband, hey, baby, listen. Sometimes putting God first may mean saying to your son or your daughter, listen, I love you, but listen. That's right. Because God comes first. And so when they go into the law of Yehovah is perfect, you know why the law of Yehovah is perfect? Because it's not based on people, it's based on action. That's it. That's what makes it perfect. Come on. The fear of Yehovah is clean, enduring forever. The ordinances of Yehovah are true, they are righteous altogether. The judgments. When they, when they use that term ordinance, it's actually judgments. Mishpate mm Yehovah. -hmm. The judgments are Yehovah are true and righteous altogether. Mm -hmm. You know what the funny thing about judgment is? Judgment comes with what? Someone who's deemed right and, someone deemed and one who's deemed wrong. That's it. Am I right or wrong? Mm -hmm. But it's still true and righteous. It's still true and righteous for the right person and it's true and righteous for the wrong person. Because it's not based on people, it's based on actions. And so... In the, in the execution of judgment, is it fair to say somebody is not going to be happy? Always. Is it fair to say somebody's not going to be happy? In the execution of judgment, is it fair to say God's going to be happy? That's right. Mm -hmm. He's the one that's judging. But also... God does what? He puts it in the hands of men and women to That's judge. Right. In all your gates. He puts it in our hands to judge. And the interesting thing about judgment, let's talk about it for a minute, right? Because there's, there's judgment, then there's also mercy. Right? And I understand mercy. We all want mercy, am I right or wrong? That's right. When it comes to Yom Kippur, when it comes on Yom Kippur and we all stand before God and we fast and all of those different things, we want God to do what? Be merciful, am I right or wrong? That's right. That's what we want. But let's just use a wild scenario and we say that someone has been, some dude was convicted of committing adultery can we be merciful and say you know what this is a nice individual this is a nice individual they so nice and they so sweet how y'all said about the other one how they said about the other one oh he sings so nice mm -hmm. I remember that from years ago sing so nice can you be merciful <laughs> and is your mercy counted as mercy or is your mercy counted as an offense before God? Mm. Because God has requirements too. And if God says the adulterer shall be put to death, the question is, can we be merciful? Mm. The, the, the merciful act is if you can just do it quick enough. <laughs> Word. <laughs> That's you being merciful. Mm -hmm. You do it quick enough. That's why I say, when you, ask, when you mentioned about Shabbat and you said that he died and listen and no he didn't he's still alive guess what he ain't received no mercy because if he would have received mercy he would have died right there now with him alive it's a chance it's a high chance that it's going to happen again 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 because oftentimes. The thing about mercy, the thing about judgment is there's always two parties. Um, when you're making a determination or decision, there's always two parties. And you, all, you always need to be equally fair to both. And that's why judgment is important. That's why making the right determination is important. Mm -hmm. The verse, 11. Come on. More to be desired are they than gold. 
Yea, they're much fine gold. Talk about judgments. Come on. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Come on. Moreover, by them as thy servant warned. In keeping of them, there is great reward. Referring to the judgments. In the keeping of the judgments, there's great reward. Come on. Who can discern errors? Clear thou me from hidden faults. So, now, I don't know exactly when David wrote this. But that's, this is something that we all face within ourselves. When they, when they ask and they say, who, shall they, who can discern errors? Clean, clear me thou from secret faults. Come on. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins, Come on. that they may not have dominion over me. Mm -hmm. Then shall I be faultless, and I shall be clear from great transgression. So, he said, who can discern mistakes? Who can discern errors? Clear me now from, from secret faults. Keep back thy servant from presumptuous sins. Presumptuous is when you overstep something that's not your bounds. When you overstep the limits, that's what presumptuous is. So guess what? Oftentimes, or sometimes, we can be presumptuous by doing what? Trying to be helpful. We can be presumptuous trying to offer what we feel is good advice. We can be presumptuous in a lot of different ways, and sometimes we can sin thereby. And David recognizes that within himself. I'm sure all of us can recognize that within ourselves. Where well, we was only trying to be right. We were only trying to be okay. And sometimes we have these secret things that a lot of times we not, not, may not even realize that we're doing something that could be sinful before God because we're really just trying to help. Mm. And so David says, cleanse me from those. Right. Those things that I might not even acknowledge or be aware of that I'm doing wrong. God, please cleanse me from those. Can you go to Lamentations 3, 21 to 23? And this is the good part about God. This is the good part about God. Come on. Take your time. Lamentations 3? Yes, three, chapter 3, verse 21 to 23. This I call to, to my, see God, this I recall to my mind. So now, what I, I just want to give a little bit of context. So when you read the first 20 verses of Lamentations, which is attributed to the uh, prophet Jeremiah, in the first 20 verses, what he's talking about is all of the bad things that are happening, all of the different things that are going wrong. And, 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 and how he sees himself and, and just the pain and the suffering that he's going through and that he's also seeing. And in all of that, this is what he says. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. Come on. Surely Jehovah's mercies are not consumed. Come on, read that again. Surely Jehovah's mercies are not consumed. Come on, amen. Surely his compassions fail not. Come on. They are new every morning. Every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Every morning. So the reason that I wanted them to read that is because guess what? Even though we might make mistakes, mistakes, even though we may sin through error and do these different things, guess what? When you wake up in the morning, you have what? A shot. Mm -hmm. When you wake up in the morning, we have what? A chance. Yeah, because God mean. recognizes and God knows you and God knows me. And God knows that if we messed up somehow, he gave you that opportunity to wake up in the morning and we have a chance. Because it's renewed every morning. every morning. You don't have to wait till Yom Kippur to get on your knees to fix something. There you, go. you don't have to wait. God said you don't have to wait. Right. So you don't have to be carrying around. You ever do something wrong and you feel bad? Mm -hmm. You ever do something wrong and you feel like, how can I fix this? You ever do something wrong and you concern to pray a little bit because you feel like God may not hear me because I can't believe I did this every morning. Every morning. Come on, let's go back to Psalms. Verse 15. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable before thee, O Yehovah, my rock and my redeemer. Hallelujah. So 
you know the the, the song that um, we sing towards the end of the Shabbat day, mm -hmm. Ye You, mm -hmm. Le'erat song. Mm -hmm. That's that's this. Right. Um, that's this uh, 1915. Let the words of my lips and the meditation of my minds be acceptable before you, Yahweh. Why? Because He knows it. Because God knows it. And so sometimes we fight those urges. Things come in our mind. All types of things come to our mind. Mm -hmm. Variety of different things. You know, you have an argument with your spouse. Ooh, a variety of different things come to mind after an argument with your spouse. I'm sure that my Isha can attest to that right now. And you ask in the most high. Let the words of my lips and the meditation of my mind. Sometimes those thoughts come out, but you need to push it out. Sometimes those thoughts come out, but we need to let positive thoughts overtake those. You ever had a child that cries way too much? When I tell you, thoughts come in your mind. I had one. I had one that just wouldn't sleep until it was time she was asleep. Oh, well, okay, well. Okay, well, that one, that, that, was, that, that was it there, right? I had one that, that one just wouldn't sleep mm. when it was time to go to bed. And I would have to get up and put that one in the car and drive until that one fall asleep. Mm -hmm. And then when I get home and I close the door real easy, and as soon as I lay that one down, and then I go to lay down, and she start, eesh, that one start crying again. Bad thoughts come. <laughs> bad thoughts come. I'm just trying to tell you, bad thoughts come. God gives, <laughs> Tylenol. <laughs> I wish I would have discovered Benadryl then. <laughs> These are our prayers before the Most High. Please let the words of our lips and the meditation of our minds be acceptable before you, Yahweh. And the beautiful thing about Psalms and songs and all of those different things is oftentimes songs, Psalms say those things. They articulate those things that we have a hard time saying. They, have a, they, they, they speak those words that we have a hard time articulating. Come on. Chapter 20. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the leader of Psalm of Dawid. Yehovah answered thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Yaakov set thee up on high. Amen. Send forth thy help from, thy, from the sanctuary. And support thee out of Zion. Receive the memorial of all thy meal offerings. And accept the fat of thy burnt sacrifice. Selah. Grant thee according to thine own heart. And fulfill all thy counsel. We will shout for joy in thy victory. And in the name of our God. We will set up our standards. Yahweh fulfill all thy petitions. I just want to stop right there. About this thing about Yahweh fulfill all, mm -hmm. uh, all of our petitions. These are the reasons why it's important for us as a people to be aligned and be on the same page. Because if I have petitions that I'm praying to God for, if y'all have petitions that are praying to God, that y'all are praying to God for, if those are petitions aren't are petitions aren't aligned, and I say this often, who God's supposed to listen to? Who is he going to hear? Whose petition is going to reach and be granted to the point that somebody else is going to be unhappy or dissatisfied? So we as a people, we're, we're cramped in places like this. And it's okay. We as a people, we're, we're, we have places like this all over the country. Mm -hmm. There needs to come a time when we as a people need to start sitting down more than just Shabbat. Right. There's a time when we as a people need to start. I mean, the other day was, was nice. 
you know, you actually get to, 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 to have fun and enjoy each other's company and, 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 and Chief Kohat out there singing up a storm and all of those different things, having a good old time. And it's a beautiful thing. But we also now need to take time to talk about the things that's going to make us better. That's right. And I know we're all busy. I know we're all busy. But the question becomes, are we busy? We're busy, but in us being busy, are we being productive? Because being productive means that we're moving towards the goal that God has set for us, not the goal that we've set for ourselves. That's productivity. Being productive means that we sit and we start to talk about how can we start to do things together. Because the fact of the matter is it's not going to get any easier here. And it's not meant for it to get easier here. That's right. And so we need to figure out a way to learn. So we need to figure out a way how to have our petitions to be aligned. And sometimes it might start with small ones. Mm -hmm. And then they grow. But we need to start. Come on. Now know I that Jehovah saveth his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the mighty acts of his saving right hand. And you know the the interesting thing about the Most High saving and the Most High acting, it doesn't always come in a manner in which we think it should come. Oftentimes, God saves and God brings salvation and people miss it because we're looking for salvation in the windfall of of some sort of a huge monetary um, endowment. Sometimes salvation is your children getting to come home every day. Sometimes salvation is your children growing up and having children and all little and because I don't know about for me, one of the worst, the worst things that I used to pray wouldn't happen is that one of my child one of my children came home not okay. Mm. Um one of the worst things that I thought about is I mean I saw so many people get jumped one of the worst things I thought about is my child come home jump swole this that and all of those different things it was one of the worst feelings in the world cuz I can't God know me I I wouldn't have been able to deal with it. Wouldn't be able to deal with it. Will I? I will be I will be forty nine years old up at the school, waiting in the car. And as soon as I see the kid and on site. And on site. On site. But those are the things, and it's those small things right. sometimes that make the biggest difference. Mm -hmm. huh. It's those small things. Yeah. And so when you think about that, and when you think about the safety that you want and you pray for for each and every one of your individual children, mm -hmm. don't you want to pray for everybody's children the same? Mm -hmm. Don't we want that? I'm just asking, don't we want that? Dang. They, the New York State, New York State um, uh, created an Adult Victims Act, mm -hmm. right? And that act was set to expire on yes, the 24th. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of people got their, got their suits in mm -hmm. right before the act expired. I want to talk about Puff. So when she brought out her case against Puff, the immediate response, was, and Benjamin Braffman, just correct me if I'm wrong, Benjamin Braffman was one of OJ's attorneys. Is that correct? I, I believe he was on that panel. However, Benjamin Braffman was 
a high-powered attorney, very competent. Puff had Benjamin Braffman. And as soon as she played the, as soon as she made the charge, they responded with a statement that said these are false, these allegations are reprehensible. He has my client has never done such a thing and and we look forward to his name being cleared in court. And then less than 40 hours 48 hours later he settled and made a statement that made a statement that said I wish her and her family well well it was definitely suspicious <laughs> definitely suspicious but the reason that I bring all of that out is what we want for us is the same thing that we should want for other people's children. And when those lines become blurred, there's a problem. We, as God-fearing people, going back to the comment that says, the law of Yehoah is perfect, restoring the soul, mm -hmm. still applies today. And so we as a people need to apply that application of it now, just like we would have back then. And sometimes decisions are very difficult because families are hurt. Um, um, but what should never happen is people should never be divided over righteousness. That's right. And that's what we need to consider. We should never be divided over righteousness. That's right. Even when when Absalom and David, and, and David sent them men out against Absalom. And I'm probably the only person in this world who Joab is my hero. <laughs> and he sent those men out against Absalom, and David told him, he said, please, whatever you do, bring the boy back what? Unharmed. And Joab was like, sure. Sure. That'll be first priority. And when he came back and he said, listen, Joab is dead. And David was crying. He was crying. Not David. Uh, Absalom is dead. Excuse me. And David was crying, crying, hurting. And Joab stood there and let him get all his emotions out. And then he said to him, he says, listen, sometimes I feel like you would have been more happy if we all died and he came back okay and he was the animal and he was the nasty one. So sometimes decisions are not easy. Sometimes decisions are difficult, but they are necessary. That's right. And so Joab told him, so get yourself together. Clean your face. Clean your face. And get out there like the king that you are. And address your people. And make a statement and address your people. Before I do it. <laughs> and the beautiful thing about David was he did. Because we should never be divided over, over righteousness. Finish it up. Some trust in chariots. And some in horses. But we will make mention of the name of Yehovah, our God. Amen. They are bowed down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save Yehovah. Let the king answer us in the day that we call. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All honors, praise, respect, acknowledgement, and thanks are offered unto the great king of the universe, to the God of our fathers, to the God of Abraham, the God of Yitzchak, and the God of Yaakov, thanking him for all things and thanking him for everything. I bid you in the tongue of our forefathers, Shabbat Shalom Lako. Shabbat shalom, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you to Mosagar for the life of.